Hey, I'm Aaron Faso, and I'm here to present Kaif's 2020 Digital Exhibition. Now, part of the, our digital experience this year for 2020 Kaif is about going out on country and yarning up with our traditional uh, visual artists on, on country and how they're maintaining and preserving our culture and way of life. Today, I'm here in Babinda, Yirinji country, and I'm about to have a yarn here with Garth Murga, Kunganji man, and also his partner, Estelle Tramby from Jabakai. Good morning to you both. Hey, good morning all. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. So now tell me, um, you guys are uh, out here in Babinda and you're engaging in, in artwork and making traditional artifacts. Now, Garth, uh, tell me, how did you get involved with all of this? Uh, what inspired us, Aaron, was, you know, watching my um, grandfather, father, you know, a lot of this has been handed down. Um, one thing I was interested in was, you know, wood carving. In our tribe, it is important to, you know, have a, a carver that, you know, that can, you know, make a lot of these artefacts. And a lot of my artefacts that I've got here, um, it's the material that I use is from the basic, you know, raw material from the rainforest. So, um, you know, with, with a lot of this stuff here, um, some of it, it, it is too beautiful, you know, to paint. So I'm not good with a, a paintbrush, but um, when you look at the, the timber, the wood, I'm looking at like it's my c canvas. So yeah. um, w w when I look at my wood, when I open it and have a look, it tells me, it tells me a story, you know. I get my ideas from a different pattern or grain in the wood. Just how the, the wood sits, how it's curved, and from there you'll get the sense of yeah, yeah. how you're going, what, what particularly you're going to actually carve. Carve, yeah. So, so when I, you know, we don't just, when we go, we, we don't cut down any trees, you know. It's just, you know, some of it's, you know, dam damaged and recycled. And, you know, that's what I look for. So these pieces here that I have, these are Kulaman. I've been working on these Kulaman. Yep. And like uh, was hoping now to showcase this year in the uh, event, but uh, I'm I'm looking forward to share this with you. So, yeah, no, that's deadly. I so, mean, because COVID's presented a different experience for us, yeah. hasn't it? Uh, yeah. When normally we'd be all prepping yeah. to head into into Cairns there uh, for, for the Kaya exhibition, but we're so lucky at this point that we can put everything on digital. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think, you know, this is a great opportunity to still be able to uh, showcase our, yeah. our artists and what you actually do. And, you know, like this time of the year now for all of us, you know, all us Indigenous people, we look forward for this time of the year on the calendar. And, um, you know, what better place where you can come and, you know, you can meet the creator, the artist, you know, the people that made it, you can get inside information directly from, you know, a lot of us artists and our stories and our meaning. I mean, what I'm really fascinated from as, as artists, because um, we, we all draw upon, you know, inspiration uh, from what we've been passed down. And so what I'm, I'm fascinated about how you are able to choose, you know, particular uh, trees or materials and engage that or, or gain that inspiration on what you're yeah. going to make. Can you tell me a bit, a bit about that ins uh, inspiration, that process? Yeah, well, like, when we, when we go walk on country, like, you know, if we're going to make a, a particular artefact, say, you know, a spear, you know, or boomerang, yeah. um, you've got to know what you're looking for, yeah. you know. So when I walk around, I'm looking, you know, oh, this could be made, you know, I could use this for a boomerang yeah. or, or I could make a shield with it. And most of the material, like when it comes to spear making or any of our, um, you know, material that we use to, you know, when put these together, uh, we look for the, the basic raw stuff. In this example here, this piece here, this is what we, this is a bush glue we call, this is a chilkul. Chul -chul -chul. Chul -chul. Yeah, so this is our bush glue. Wow. So um, we use that now to make our spears. So we use that now. And in the rainforest also, 
this here is a bit of black palm. Sure. So with the black palm, we made our shaft, also made our cross boomerang. And, and, so. and why was that? Why, why did most of our mob up here use a cross boomerang in comparison to, say, the re return boomerang? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, the cross boomerang, we used it in ceremony. Yep. Dance, we used to dance with them. So this is, a, this is one piece, so the other piece goes across. Yep. It has a hole in the centre, mm. and we tie that together with a bit of bush loike. Yep. And, you know, strung you, together using with... Using the traditional... Yeah, this is all the bush traditional... Bush glue? Yeah, all the traditional bush glue that we use. Amazing. So the cross boomerang, it's used for, you know, dance ceremony, and... Um, so that's something that's what's really unique, you know. I think there's, there's not too many um, tribes around Australia that, you know, made the cross boomerang, cross boomerang. mainly the rainforest people. It stretched far as north of Mossman to south of Cardwell. So it's only sort it's of found in this... coastal area. Yeah, area. so the, all the rainforest groups that, you know. So I try and, you know, keep my culture, you know, live. That's why I, you know, try and make a lot of these artefacts. Yeah, and I, and I think this is where this is this this dynamic duo comes I mean, into play because yeah. Garth, you're the carver, but Estelle, this is where your experience and your forte comes into play because you're the you're the painter or the visual artist. Yes, can you tell me a bit about the work that you do to complement uh, Garth's work? Well, like with the wood stuff, like I do different. Uh, mediums on them. I do wood burning as well as uh, um, ordinary uh, hand painting on them. And um, when I look at a piece, I just follow the grains, or if I see a certain pattern, and then you know, like I'll incorporate my artwork into the um, timber. It's like if I see something like that, like with the grain yep. running through it, you know, like I'll. I'll um, do a piece of art like with, you know, people food gathering or walking along yeah. across the country. Okay, because this is this would be useful for food gathering, correct? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, it's yep. a kulaman. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah. kulaman, they come in all different shapes. This one's here. You got your open end. You got your bowl. So kulaman is a you know multi um, carrying vessel yep. that that our people you know they carry their food, their berries. So that's what that was used for. And when they went out on food gathering, the ladies, they'll carry this. This is known as a digging stick. Digging stick, yeah. So, you know, when they go food gathering, you know, um, they'll probably look for like yam. Uh, for those who don't know what yam, it's like a sweet potato. It's in the ground, so they use this now to dig. Yep. They use that for dig, or you can use it as a club or weapon. Yep. So that's our digging sticks. Yeah. And most of our artifacts, the rainforest people, the black bottle timber was the most common. So as you can see, a lot of this is a rainforest uh, black bottle, Sally bottle. It's quite heavy yeah. and it's quite hard as well. But also, but, but it's, it's still light. Real light, so yeah, when it's, it's still dry. light. So when I work with timber, I, you know, I cannot just go straight in like, you know, on a canvas, you, you can paint it and it's finished. Yeah. With timber, you've got to season it. So what I mean by season it, you've got to let it sit for a while to let all that sap, all that yeah. sap, all that to come through before you can start working. Because if you work on the green timber, that will come through on your art. Okay. So um, with timber, yeah, you, you've got to season the timber. And some of our lot, when they, the traditional way, what they done when they wanted to cure it, they'd um, also sit it in charcoal of fire. Ah, okay. Fire, water, you know, sit it, yep. sit it in to cure it. And also, this here also used for uh, varnish, like gl uh, a coat for sealant. Okay. So amazing. Uh, so we'll, we'll sit this on a fire, you know, melt yep. it down, and you know, we can, you can just wipe it, brush it on, and that will seal our timber. And, and so we got the black wattle here. What, what, what other uh, um, this timbers? Piece, this piece here. This is a bit of oak. So that's a nice, beautiful little piece of timber. That's uh, you know, oak there. It is. I mean, you can see the yeah the grain the dif difference in the grain. Uh, this piece here, this is the bloodwood tree. So that's you know the bloodwood. So it's got a bit of red. So, so that's beautiful yeah. itself, isn't it? This is going to be a kidney shape. So that hole, that's going to get patched. You won't see that. You can yep. you can see the shape of that yep. that kidney there. Kidney, so yeah. That's a kidney shape one. So 
Beautiful. Um, so how long have you both, I mean, have been set up here and uh, engaging and making, you know, your, your artwork? Well, with her and I, um, we start now 30 years. 30 years. 30 years we've been doing it. And wow. we, we've been in this industry a very long time. And uh, what kept us going is my passion for my culture. What I what I do, and uh, a lot of my inspiration, where I get it from, is from my uh, my country. I come from uh, off Yarraba yep. in Kunganji, so um, that inspired me into um, you know continue in what I'm doing, and my aim is to you know pass this on to the our next generation. Um, there's not too many you know craft people out there that you know continue in this. So um, I'm quite fortunate to be, you know, blessed, you know, to have this, my skills here. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. And Estelle, um, I mean, your father was uh, a, a great artist and, and mm. uh, an advocate for contemporary, um, you know, visual artists uh, in this region, region being a Jabbergai man. How important is it for you uh, to, to be able to continue uh, the work, but also the importance to also pass it on to the next generation. Yeah, well, um, yeah, it's important for me to carry on, you know, the, my cultural side of thing. Because um, as I was growing up, you know, like I've been brought up in cultural things. Like my dad's a well-known artist, and he knew a lot about culture as well. Yeah. But also my grandparents, um, they taught us a lot about, you know, going out bush and how to collect all our materials. Like my grandmother, she was a basket weaver, and they used to take us out to Mona Mona and that when, you know, to collect all their yep. materials and that. And my grandfather, he always was into artifacts as well. So I basically grew up with that, learning all those skills of my grandparents and my dad. And, um, Dad used to always um, have fine time after work, you know, to sit down and do his painting and would sometimes sit down and watch what he do with his artwork. And he also taught us a, lot, a fair bit about culture, yeah. him and my grandparents. And that's where I got my artistic skills from, yeah, with the guidance of Dad, you know. Yeah. You know, like if I'd done a piece when I first started, you know, I'd get my dad to look over it yeah. for me. Yeah. yeah. It's like with anything that we were going to make, you know, any objects, like the first thing what we do is run it through our elders, yeah. you know, to, you know, if it's yeah. okay that, you know, because some artifacts and stuff, you know, that, that, that's where we have to be careful of, you know, get permission, you know, from our elders and what we can paint. And, yeah. and, I, and I guess, you know, we as, you know, Aboriginal Torres Strait or First Nations storytellers, um, I think for all of us, we still rely upon that spiritual inspiration that we receive yeah. from, from our ancestors. ancestors. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Excuse us, Aaron, I'm just going to grab another piece. Yeah. Yep. See, these, these are my real boomerangs. So that's not something I want to share. You're all good? Okay. Yeah. So when I go to make my boomerangs, I go out, you know, in the rainforest, in the scrub, yep. you know, looking looking for my pieces. And as you can see, well, is this is natural, a natural shape. It's a natural shape, isn't this it? This is the natural shape. So this is what the, you're looking for? This is what I'm looking for. Yep. So this is a natural shape. So this piece what we're holding is, is a, a black wattle. Um, this one, We'll use it as a clap boomerang or a yep. big killer boomerang. Killer so I can use a, yep. you know, a, a clap boomerang. And um, like I said, um, you know, these are the best that you can get. Whereas a lot of the ones you see in the, the flash, pretty ones, you know, um, they're all right. They might look flash, but these are your real traditional. This is ones. the real. This is the this is the real deal. Real here. deal. And, yeah. and when you say these are the yeah. killer boomerangs, yeah, these are the killer boomerangs. So they're meant to. 
yeah. inflict some permanent damage. damage. Yeah, you know, for hunting. So, <laughs> this is yeah. a proper for hunting here. For yeah. proper hunting. This and is not just for yeah. artifact. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you can see the natural shape. You know, that's, that's the shape already of the boomerang. It's, it's ready there, you know. So, yeah. And out of these pieces, you know, I'll, I'll probably split it, split it again and I'll get a pair of, you know, these killer boomerangs from So how many, w w how many boomerangs will you get out of this? Uh, we'll, we'll get a pair. So yeah, so you get two out of these. Yeah, two yeah. out of that and, and a two out of these. Fantastic. So these are the, the elbows. We call these the elbows. When you're out there on country, how many artifacts or how many tools are you, you're able to get out of get the, a, one, the one wood, yeah? It's yeah. not just going out just for one piece. But like when I walk around, well, that's like my, you know, Hardware or you know your bunnings, the, my bunnings. So your bunnings, here, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're looking, and how the um, the old people used to make them, they'll you know they sit there with their stone axe, they'll split them, you know, put wedges to split them, and when it comes to shaping, that's when we use some of the natural tools. They made their own tools out of shells, yep. you know, um, you know, like oyster rocks. Yep. And they'll sit there, uh, or you know, they'll chip away, um, and they'll chip away and shape and. Um, that's how they done it the, the traditional way. You know, I know today uh, we got modern machinery. I think. But hey, we're keeping up with the times yeah. too. You know, we're evolving. Yeah. We're evolving as well. Yeah, but um, you know, it's all based on the same principle. So it is. In know. essence, we we're, 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 yeah. I mean, we're still maintaining and still engaging yeah. in our cultural practices. Yeah. But utilizing contemporary yeah. means. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, both of you come from you know uh, rainforest country. How important uh, for you both to be, you know, living in such a beautiful area, backed onto beautiful rainforest here in Babinda? Oh, look, it's you know, it's one of the best. You know, you can't ask for any more. And and you know, we have our we go through our season, but we, you know, and then you know, uh, and then we have our you know good season that you know like today's a, you know beautiful day that we. Uh, inspire us you know how how, how has the the COVID impacted the oh, business look you know over the years we've been through so many so many you know events you know and this one has you know it's really knocked us and you know it's a, it's a big impact on all of us because this time of the year you know all us indigenous people we all look you know excited for this you know this weekend you know, to come come out and, you know, share our culture, you know, share our pieces, you know, art with the, you know, carving. And um, it's, you know, a bit sad where we can't do it, but, you know, these days, uh, you know, we do everything digital, so. Yeah. Estelle, how important um, is Kayaf and this whole digital uh, exhibition now important for our visual artists and, and our culture and our people more so now? Well, with all the restrictions, the COVID restrictions, you know, like going digital, that's sort of our only way at the moment to get yeah. our work and get ourselves all out there. Yeah. And um, because, um, you know, like we can't, obviously can't gather anymore. Yeah. So this would be the only way to go, you know, like digital, you know, to get all our work out there. And, and for, for you both, I mean, you can b both answer this. Um, how important is Kayaf for our people? Kayaf is very important to our people. Um, like I say, for a lot of us little small artists, you know, to the big art centres, uh, without Kayaf, it'll be very hard for a lot of us because, you know, uh, it's a good way, you know, they do all the promoting and, you know, um, and you know, sharing a lot of our stories and and um, it it gives visitors that are coming to Kayaf that, that first hand to experience they can, you know, they can meet the artists, they can find out the stories, the meaning behind their pieces and it's, you know, 100% authentic of people wanting to, you know, buy, you know, whatever and support our people. Estelle, as an artist, um as a visual artist, uh, how important is, is Kaya f for you in your work? Yeah, it's really important, like, to get my work out there and, you know, recognised a bit. And also to, you know, show the, you know, get my, show my art 
And also with COIAF, you know, it gives everyone, all our mob, you know, chance to get out and about and, you know, meet other yeah. people. And, you know, that's where everyone all comes to meet. Yeah. Yeah. All the families it's, it's, it's and like friends. It's like our corroboree, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, it's like yeah. a big it's gathering. Big, big gathering. Big gathering. Our own, our own ceremony. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it, it, where we're <laughs> able to reconnect um, yeah. and our kinship connections. Yeah. 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 And you know, us black ones, well, we just oh, love yarning. Yeah, you love, yeah. you love yarning and telling <laughs> stories, laughing all the time. Yeah. You know. It's like a big gathering, you know, yeah, a big, time big that family, we all gather you know, a big together. Family gathering, so. Yeah, and it's, you know, yeah. it's it really good for all our mob. And and like, you know, what we normally get after Kayaf, you'd be surprised the amount of people, that they mightn't, you know, buy on that day, but when they go back home, you can guarantee that, you know, people are contacting and uh, you know, from 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 a marketing point, you know, um, they do a very well job there. So fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I want to do now is is okay. We we see where this process starts. Okay, <coughs> in your in your workshop, which is you know, this is fantastic because it's just the outdoors, mm. eh? Yeah. It's the outdoors work, uh, workshop. But where where I want to go now is to see. Where all of this, the end product yeah. inside. Yeah. So why don't we go inside? Yeah, we can go yeah. inside. Yep. Which way you want to go? This way. We go this yeah, way. Okay, Garth and Estelle, we're here now in your studio, and this is basically where your uh, artworks feature in terms of the end product. Because we obviously we're outside uh, where the workshop area is. Can you tell me a bit about all this wonderful work here? Yeah, um, well this is all our finished products and um, this is all our finished artefacts and I did artwork and I used a different range of colours like the traditional as well as the contemporary and the way I do my artwork is um, I try to blend it in with the artefacts, yep. the best way I can. And it's interesting because you, you, uh, you're dealing with a lot of uh, the silhouettes. Yeah. What's, I mean, where's the inspiration come from? Like with, for me, um, the silhouettes, they sort of tell a story, you know, like instead of painting every single pattern in the people. Yeah. With the silhouettes, it makes the background colour tones stand out as well. Yeah. Yeah, and I do a lot of my artwork that represents, you know, our culture and what we've been taught. And like when, when Kayaf rocks around, we keep all our special stuff for that, you know, event where, you know, where we can, you know, uh, paint some of the stories that we try and, uh, you know, to show and tell, so. Now tell me a little bit about this artwork feature here. What's the uh, story behind this particular piece? Uh, one of the pieces that um, I worked on and uh, we was hoping to have it this year in the um, in the art fair, Kansas Indigenous Art Fair. Um, a piece that I want to show you was um, a shadow box. I made a shadow box. Um, for those who don't know what shadow box is, it's a um, it's made up of multiple mini artifacts. So this is made up of multiple mini artifacts. And what I've done here was. I assemble it with all the rainforest artifact, as you can see on here. Um, you got your, your your boomerang, your rainforest sword, your woomera, it's your spear thrower, your returning boomerang, and you know the hooks and club, and the two pieces here. That's your uh, fishing and hunting spears. The centerpiece uh, represent our paddle, the the canoe the, the, that we use. So um, this is one of, one of the pieces. Estelle, would you like to just pull that one down off the wall there for us, please? Okay. Um, with the shadow box, it came about in the 1960s. Shadow box, um, it first started. Um, the community was Sherberg down in Brisbane, and then all the other communities started making them. And it sort of died out uh, for a while. And I've always had a passion. I've seen my uncles in that had these things, and I said, "Oh, I'd like to have a go at doing it." So I finally got around and and making these pieces, 
And um, so, um, as you can see, this, what it does, it connects us to both our land and sea. And these what some of the, the painting that uh, shows. Uh, early this year, we had a um, launching of these, was supposed to be at QAC, Queensland Aboriginal Creation in Brisbane. But due to the COVID, this was curated by Gretchen Stolte. And so um, everything's been put on hold, but I'm willing to share this. So um, this is one of my pieces that we made, the shadow box. And then it's finished off with Estelle's, you know, some of the artwork. Um, Estelle, the silhouette, I've, done, I've painted the silhouette style artwork. You got the hunters down below, the hunting, you got the fishermen, and you got the families traveling through the land. And um, the inside parts and the middle, they, that's the, that symbolizes a hunter, you know, the man. He got his spears on either side, and that's the body of the man there, and his arms and legs that come out in the bottom. You got the floral pattern of the rainforest vines. Yeah, with and one of these pieces, it's been really a, a lot of work it's gone into. It's taken me, you know, months and months to just to work out the idea of what I'm wanting to do. And um, just to assemble it, um, every little piece that I hit on here, I had to make miniature. These are miniature artifacts, you know, your, your boomerangs, your sword. This piece here is made up of uh, several of different types of wood. Um, these pieces here, the, the lighter colour, that's black wattle. And if you look carefully, that's the black bean. You see the dark colour? The dark colour, that's, that's black bean. So, um, and then what it's, it's backed onto a, a frame. So if we turn it over, and that's the back of them, what they look like. And I even went through the length of making the, um, the spears. You can, you can see that's your fish spear, and that's a single one. So and it's, 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 it's assembled together on the back like so. So that's the story of the shadow box. Yeah. Are you going to pass this knowledge on though? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to pass it, like, um, I'll, I'll share this with my sons, you know, my family. So um, I've got my son, when we actually were working, um, I've got them and showed them how, you know, this was made. My son's taken it one further by using some of the others and you can see the shape of the, the turtle. You know, Ian yeah, you can. has blended in. This is the, you know, the yep, turtle yep, wing. Yep. That's his wing. That's his tail and his head. So, you know, um, on these, they also represent um, our food source when we went out, you know, you know, hunting, you know. We went on the sea, not just only land, but the sea also provided for us, you know, our seafood. And I guess yeah. part of that is, you know, part of that is men's story. Yeah, and men's business, and, and, I, and I think through these shadow boxes is also uh, we also tell our own uh, men and women yeah. stories. Yeah, well, correct. Yeah, and also our spiritual relationship to our food source because yeah. prior to going out mm. for hunting, yeah. whether that be in land or sea, yeah. there is a ceremony or there's a spiritual connection that we that we prepare, prepare. for. Yeah. so we so to ensure yeah. that when we go out, yeah. that we are going to come back yeah. with the food. That's why, yeah, no, it was really important, you know, um, that, you know, connection to that, you know, sea life. So, you know, we just didn't kill anything and everything because, no. you know, you know, we had to, you know, preserve it, you know, for our next lot, you know, so, um, yeah, that was really important. So, uh, and that's the story that's behind that. Yeah. Look, I, uh, I really want to thank you for your time here that, have, yeah. that I've been, you've been able to make time for me to share with you, yeah. uh, both uh, Garth and Estelle. It's, it's really important that we've had this time because me as a, for myself as a, as a, as a Torres Strait Island man, uh, to be able to uh, have this opportunity to reconnect uh, our kinship connections, um, you know, that we have, we share from, you know, the Torres Strait connection with the Gungenji, Jabugai, and the Indigenous people, I think this has been a wonderful opportunity. 
to discuss and how we're continuing to uh, maintain uh, and preserve our culture and, and way of life. So I thank you both. Mm. Thank you, Aaron. Hey, Aaron, I'd just like to thank you and your crew, um, Kayaf itself, for giving us this opportunity to share a bit of our culture. It's a bit sad we can't, you know, be there in person live, but I think this is the next best thing. So we look forward to next year, you know, bigger and better things. So thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah.